and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as I'm still waiting for my delivery of Journeys through Middle Earth, I decided to do a quick playthrough of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Yes, it's app driven. I think it's not so different to a Lord of the Rings here. Yeah despite the topic or the theme, of course, but I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, hope you will too. So let's see how things go, shall we? Okay, and here we are. In the meantime, by the way, I received my copy of Lord of the Ring Journeys in Middle-earth. Still, I wanted to because I already prepared everything for Mansions of Madness now. Let's do our run through of Mansions of Madness before we dive into Middle-earth. So let's start a new game. I definitely, as I never played this game on camera before, I decided to go with Cycle of Eternity, basically the very first scenario. Sorry for boring you guys. Pretty sure you have seen this. Maybe I will consider doing a second playthrough later on if you're interested in a more, let's say, advanced scenario. And keep in mind, I'm really not owning any of the expansions other than the basically conversion kits or stuff from the first edition and also the what was it recurring nightmares I believe um, where you get pretty much all the stuff that came with the first edition expansion stuff which I also didn't get in the past. Apart from that I'm not owning any additional mission scenarios physical boxes maybe I will consider doing this um, but yeah, for now, let's stick to what I have. Yeah, difficulty is low. We will select our investigators. This is something I already did off camera. And yes, I did that um, randomly, of course, as I usually do. So we have Carson Sinclair. We have Gloria Goldberg. I think she's the author. And we will go with Mandy Thompson here. And then let's get our starting items we have candles the crowbar the holy cross king james bible feed the mind spell and we will all start the um, investigation with two clues let me pick up that stuff and here's how i assigned those starting resources mandy thompson has the highest sanity so i gave her the feed the mind spell you or another investigator within range become focused then flip this card here yeah, let's see what happens she also carries the candle which is a light source which is always good when let's say darkness comes out uh, but we can also use it to discard all of those clue symbols to a success while casting a spell right now she has the only spell so it makes sense for her gloria seems to be a tough lady so I gave her the crowbar so which can do two additional damages or wounds when used correctly and then there is Carson who gets the holy cross roll one additional die while resolving a will test he has together with Mandy Thompson the lowest will which is why I assigned the cross to him and he also carries the King James Bible you or another investigator within range may discard one face down horror always a nice thing and maybe he's really one of those believers of that makes kind of thematic sense to me and of course let's not forget to give all of those investigators their starting clue back to the up let's go to the setup sometimes i believe that this less material life is our truer life and that our vain presence on the terracurus globe is itself secondary or merely virtual phenomenon hp lovecraft okay let's begin our scenario you slumped into your office chair after another long day of interviews. You've been investigating the disappearances surrounding a wealthy neighborhood for two weeks, but you have nothing to show for it. The telephone rings. You answer and hear the panicked voice of an older man. Is, is this the investigator who visited the Vanderbilt estate? You flip through the files on your desk. William Vanderbilt, a wealthy bachelor, mother recently deceased. He has refused to meet with you, but you were able to speak to several members of his serving staff. This is Eugene, Mr. Vanderbilt's butler. I, I didn't know who else to call. The police think I'm crazy. Unnatural things have started happening here. I'm worried for my master. I, I think he's in danger. Please, help. Finally, a lead. You hang up the phone, throw on your coat, and leave for the Vanderbilt estate. Okay, not sure if you were able to hear this, but let's continue anyway. Let's move to the starting setup. Your car rattles up the uneven drive, pulling to a stop in front of the estate. Several cars and carriages are parked along the drive. However, the butler who contacted you is nowhere to be seen. 
He knocked on the large oak door to no response. Fearing something has happened, he tried the handle and the door swings open into a lavish entryway. Place the lobby tile and the walls and walls as indicated. So let me do that real quick. I believe one is going here. And I think there is also one here, if I'm not mistaken, that's new. And then you step into the warmth of the house, a strange stillness hangs in the air and your footsteps echo through the quiet entrance. Place an investigative figure, I think this goes in here, simple as that. And then we have to start assigning our first search tokens. In the middle of the lobby sits a table with a small pile of papers. Place a search token as indicated, let me do that. A table with a telephone sits at the top of the staircase on the right. Place a search token as indicated as well. Let me also do that basically off camera here. And of course we have the mysterious painting of a nighttime landscape looms over the lobby staircase. Place a search token as indicated. And the silence is broken by the muffled shouts and sounds of crashing pots and pans coming from the door on your left. Place an explore token as indicated, which pretty much goes in here. So let's continue. You notice a small shelf staked with books and other objects nearby. Pushing it in front of the door could prevent someone or something from coming through. Place a barricade as indicated. I believe I have never really used a barricade, at least not as far as I can remember, at least not in the second edition. Not even sure if that was a thing in the first edition, but I played this a little bit, a little bit more often than the second edition, I have to confess. But yeah, anyway, this is the barricade. So let's continue. Three other doors lead into the mansion. Place explore tokens as indicated. I will do that in a second. And I think let's start the investigator phase. I am pretty sure that most of you should know the game, but still let's run through the rules real quickly. Each of our investigators has two actions. Um, we can activate them in any order, but of course you still have to go through your full action before it's time for the next investigator. And after that you go to the mythos phase, I believe this is called in this game. And in most cases we do stuff within the app. So if I want to explore this room here, I want to see what's on this table, then I have to do something within the app. I will come to that in a second. This game is relatively easy in respect to the rules, but there's still some little let's say bits and pieces which I most likely will do incorrectly. One thing that always confuses me is fire, which is one of the things that really annoys me in this game. So far in every of my scenarios I played, there was a fire somewhere, though for me this seems to be some kind of a balancing mechanic but to me it's really a very weak design to be honest but okay let's see how we will get there um i think first of our things should be to find the butler i believe here was the kitchen at least it sounded like the kitchen pots and pans so i think one of those investigators should look in there and i think i will start with gloria goldberg because she has the weapon if there's something terrible will be here she will be able to deal with that so our first or her first action will be to explore this room here so let's see what happens. Ruckus can be heard on the other side of this door, shouting the crash of pots and pans. Is that hissing? Let's explore. So this, there we really need to spend an action or to go any further. We can have a look at all of those tokens here on the board to see, okay, what were those? But um, so I don't have to basically commit to an action only when I then really do explore or search or whatever, or interact, whatever it says. I really have to spend one of my two actions. So let's explore that. And yes, this is the kitchen. The door swings open to reveal a dining room in chaos. An aging man in tailcoat scrambles through a serving window into the kitchen as he tries to escape a strange black creature writhing on the dining room table. Discard this explore token and place the dining room tile and a wall as indicated. So this is the token, this is gone. So let's see what we will do. And yeah, the creature turns to face you. Its black serpentine body shifts and changes, playing tricks on your eyes as you try to focus on it. The creature unfurls its leathery wings and unleashes a blood-curling speech. Spawn a hunting horror as indicated, then suffer two horror and will can negate that horror. Okay, let's set up the room real quick. Let's spawn the hunting horror and terribly sorry for the poor gluing on my part. But well, that's the hunting horror and now Gloria has to take two horror but will would negate. Her will is a four so I think that overall there is a chance 
she's not getting any wounds so let's roll a horror hits in this case and that's one success of course we can now spend one clue in order to transform this into a success and i think this is what i will do i will not do early damage or damage too soon on those so we have basically migrated or transformed this clue into a success so those are two hits which we negated so that's good so let's continue here. In the center of the dining table, a carving knife sits embedded in a roast. Place the knife common item as indicated. An investigator can pick up an item in his space here yeah, as part of a trade action. Okay, this can be definitely helpful. And then we will see a china cabinet stands against the wall. Though it looks to have been repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks. Place a search token as indicated. I will also do that in a second. And there we can see a kitchen through the serving window. Most of the cabinets are ajar due to the food preparation. But one of that has been locked shut with a chain catches your attention. Place a search token as indicated there as well. And what do we have here in the kitchen? You can also see that the, someone has left the refrigerator open. Water leaks out into a puddle on the floor. We'll also place another search token there. And last but not least, we will spot the old man you saw climbing through the serving window, huddling in the corner behind the oven. Sweat beads off his brow and his eyes bulge in terror. Place a person token as indicated. This is Eugene the butler. Okay, let's prepare the rest of the room. And of course, I nearly forgot, we may move one space into the explored area. And I think this is what she wants to do. So I placed all those tokens here. Let's not forget to place the knife. Let's place the knife below this creature here. In theory, I can basically do anything I want in this space now. There is a monster, so before I do anything else, I have to evade the monster first. But again, our plan was to attack whatever it's in there because again Gloria Goldberg is carrying the crowbar and I think with her second action which she still have she wants to engage this little critter so let's see here's the monster we want to attack the monster and we will do that with a heavy weapon heavy weapon is up here you kick the creature back, leaving it scrambling and vulnerable. You raise your weapon and take advantage of the monster's sudden weakness. Strength plus one, the monster suffers damage equal to your test result. Oh, we don't get a bonus from the weapon itself. Okay, her strength is only a two, so she will roll three dice. So this will definitely not be enough to kill the beast. He, it has a strength of six. Yep. Oh, that's really bad. Um, only basically two of those clue symbols. So I think she will spend one clue because her special ability says at the start of your turn, if you have no clues, gain one clue. So yeah, let's spend the last clue in order to transform this into a hit. I was really hoping for more here. So yeah, let's assign this hit and then we will continue. This was unfortunately already her action and i guess we really want to get rid of that beast here another investigator within range may perform one action activate this ability only once per round so i think we will continue with carson sinclair so i guess let's have him move him here in theory he could try to move basically further uh, maybe we should try that because then he could in his next action directly go for one of those clue tokens. Yeah, I think let's do that. So he will try to move out. You get two movement points out of your move action. But and now because he wants to move out, he has to evade the monster. But this can go terribly wrong. So let's see. We will evade. Resolve an evade check. Confirm. The creature displays remarkable agility, hovering sideways into your path with a shriek. Okay, we have to do what is it? An agility test okay he will not be able to make it because yeah see for yourself we need three successes his agility is a two so he will not pass if you fail your attempts to escape are met with a flashing knife suffer one damage and forfeit your action so he has to stand where he is but he will suffer one damage so of course this will be a face up damage so let's see what we get and that's really a bad bad start the pain clouds your vision and sends you staggering resolve immediately suffer one additional face down damage but then flip this card face down okay let's flip this card face down and he gets an additional 
face down damage. Good thing is his health is eight, so he can definitely take a little bit more than that. But this was his move action. And next he will use his special action, another investigator within range. We'll perform basically um, one action. And of course we will have Caloria go again because she is clearly in range. So let's see, we will attack again, but she will attack with her crowbar again. You kick the creature back, leaving it scrambling and vulnerable. You raise your weapon, and take advantage of the monster's sudden weakness. Didn't we have the same thing again? Yeah, it's again strength plus one. So with this, we will not go anywhere. Uh, I think it's not really the best weapon for this hunting horror, it seems. That's another damage which we did. Wow, two out of six. We don't have any more clues. But slowly and steadily we get there. Okay, that's one more hit yeah that's pretty much it and then last but not least it's mandy who's still here and i think for now she wants to hmm, i think she doesn't want to move in the kitchen as well let's have a look at this table here so what did we have Disheveled pile of paper sits on the table. Yes, let's search for it. The papers stacked on the table are invitations marked with today's date. The stars have come round to their positions in the cycle of eternity. The Vanderbilt Astronomy Association cordially invites you to the celebratory evening. Gain one clue, then discard the search token, which is good for her because whenever she gains a clue, she gains a second clue once per round. Definitely a good start. So she can be definitely very vital asset to solving some of our tests. So let's remove this search token here as well. Let's click continue. And then she has one more action. And I think huh, let's have her maybe go after one of those tokens here, this painting here. Or maybe, I think this was the telephone if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Yes, it's a telephone. Of course, I'm out of action, so I cannot do this this time. But I think let's, yeah, let's, let's look into those things. Let's have a move up either here or there. What should we get? Let's, let's go. She is the researcher, so she wants to research that painting. I think this makes sense. Okie dokie. This, those were all of our actions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think I didn't forget any equipment or whatnot. No, I think I'm good. So let's end the investigator phase. Mythos phase. Dum. Gloria Goldberg is assailed by horrible dreamlike visions, specters of failure, and evidence of her terrible actions. She struggles to distinguish between reality and phantasm. Gloria Goldberg suffers one face down horror, low minus one negates, then she flips one horror face up. Oh, that's cool. At first she gets one face down horror and then she flips it face up. But we can still negate it. Her lore is a four, so she will roll three dice, but we only need one success yet. So one face down horror. And of course, I'm failing as usual. Okay, that's really bad. So this is her face down horror. Horror, then we will flip it up as per the app. And here we have squeamish. Even the sight of blood turns your stomach. Keep face up. After you perform an attack action, flip one horror face up. Ooh, that's bad. Okay, yeah, we have to keep this horror next to us. And then we continue within the app. The hunting horror moves three spaces toward the investigator within range with the highest um, negotiation influence. Then it attacks that investigator. Right now in range are only two those fellas because you don't usually don't trace a range through doors. And the highest influence is basically both Carson or Gloria. Carson already has taken two hits, so I think we will assign Gloria for that. So the monster will attack. Leaping into the air, the horror lands heavily upon you with teeth and claws flashing. Suffer two damage and strength minus one negates. She only has two strength, so she will only roll one die. And wow, that's a success. Awesome. She still takes one damage, unfortunately. So this is not face down. No, it's normal damage. Again, it's a grievous injury. Wow, I have shoveled the hell out of those cards. So yeah, we will have to take one additional face down wound. So here we are. Wow, she's also pretty shaken already. Ugh. Wow, what a bad start. 
So let's see. Each investigator must resolve the horror check against a monster within range with the highest horror rating. Okay, that's good news for Mandy, but not so much for Carson and Sinclair. After all, horror checks have been resolved. Tap the end phase button to continue. Okay, yeah, let's start with, I don't know, Gloria here. Resolve a horror check for Gloria. The creature makes a strange whistling noise. It pierces through the din of flapping wings and whipping tail. We need to do a will test and two successes. Again, her will is a four. We need two successes. No, that's only one success. If you fail, you are deafened for a moment and through the ringing silence, you hear the distant sounds of screams. Suffer two horror and become dazed. Wow, this is terrible. So first of all, let's do two horror. That's this thing here. Minor shock, no additional effect. Flip this card face down. Ah, your heart raises, your breath catches in your throat. Okay, let's do the same thing here. That's a panic. Wow, you scream, leaping desperately away and tumble to the ground. Resolve immediately. Suffer one additional face down damage, then flip this card face down. Wow, this is bad. She already has taken three horror and is about to take her third damage now. Wow, this is really insane half dead already and of course we must not forget she's dazed and this pretty much means you cannot spend clues to convert dice results or perform additional puzzle steps wow at the end of your turn discard this card okay we will get rid of it relatively soon so let's continue and then we still have to do the same for Carson, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. Carson is also there. He nearly forgot that. Resolve a horror check. How can such a monster exist? It flutters on wings, too small to support its bulk, sliding sinuously through spaces where it should not fit. Its every movement sends a terrible thrill running down your spine. Suffer three horror and basically will minus one negate. So he also he has a will of three only, but because of his holy cross, he rolls an additional die so that's pretty much negates the minus one so he will roll three dice in the end that's only one success which means he will also suffer two horror now if i'm not mistaken yeah that's the case that's the first horror hysteria flip one damage face up that's okay we don't have it so then we flip it face down second horror is weak willed become mesmerized you feel something sinister take root within your mind. Okay, what does mesmerize mean? At the end of your turn, an alien will take control. Flip this card. Okay, whatever this means, there are a lot, whole bunch of mesmerized cards, so they will see different effects. Hopefully I will not forget that. This will be face down. So he also already suffered two horror out of his six sanity. And I think that's it for those horror checks. So let's continue and I think this is pretty much the end. We will end the mythos phase. Yeah, that's the case. We will move back to the investigator phase. And wow, what an awful start into this adventure. I have no clue what went wrong here, but wow, this was so bad. I'm really not good at this game, so I'm pretty sure I can really not remember if I won this even once, which is still okay for me. I like losing games, so don't get me wrong, but this was really an exceptionally bad start to be honest not sure what you think guys maybe you want to send me some piece of advice what i should be doing next maybe without considering any spoilers again i have played this scenario at least twice or three times but still i cannot remember all of those little details where to find what and the mansion looks a little bit different each time you play anyway but yeah hope you are enjoying my little playthrough of mansions of madness the second edition here hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and yeah until then bye bye